The University of St. Thomas is now officially a Division I institution as the calendar turns to July 1st, 2021. And Athletic Director Phil Eston joins me now. First of all, Phil, congrats. All the waiting, it's over. How does it feel now to officially, not that there were any hiccups, yeah. but how does it feel to officially be a Division I athletic school? You know, it, it, a lot of planning, as you referenced. And first of all, thanks for thanks for having me on here, David. I, I appreciate it. it. You know, it's been a lot of planning, two plus years in the making here. And, you know, for us to finally be able to, um, you know, flip the switch and fully embrace and lean into, you know, our new Division One conference and conferences, uh, it, you know, it feels good. That said, um, we know that we still have a lot of work to do. Um, we're not going to just simply rest because, you know, it's July 1st. Um, but it does feel good to be able to focus on the future. Take me back to May 2019. And, you know, the rumors had been circulating in the, in the weeks prior to that. But then you're home for essentially your entire life. You're home for about 100 years, the MIAC, the Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. Your D3 home involuntarily removes you. What was that feeling like when those rumors percolated and then it actually happened? Yeah. Yeah. May, May 22nd, <laughs> 2019. Um, I, you know, we had a little event last night and I mentioned it's two years, one month and eight days ago, or now nine days ago. Um, we learned that the Mayax future wasn't going to include the Tommies. And, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a former student athlete at St. Thomas. I played baseball here in the, in the nineties. And, um, that was difficult for all of us. It was one of those things where, as, as you said, you know, it's been our home for a hundred years. We were a founding member of the conference. Uh, it was a, it was a sad day, frankly. Um, it, it had been something that had been building for a bit of time. And so obviously the day that it was announced publicly wasn't a surprise to us, but nonetheless, it was, it was difficult. Um, but I'll tell you on, on May 23rd, uh, we started planning our future. And so it, you know, it, we very quickly started to look towards, you know, what are our options? What's next for St. Thomas? Um, let's be bold. Um, and in, in conversations with commissioner Dupel, uh, that's when we really thought that that there might be a possibility to do the unprecedented. So, you know, I'll tell you at the, you know, back to the question at the at the time itself, it was it was sad. It was really um, disappointing for us. Uh, you know, so many of us here are former student athletes at St. Thomas, and so um, just kind of working through the different emotions. Um, you know, that's that's when we started to work through those things. But I think we also very quickly knew that we had to focus on the future. This is an historic move. First full-time jump from Division Three to Division One. You mentioned the Summit League kind of gave you the outlet to at least apply for the waiver. That waiver was granted last summer. I believe it was July, mid-July last summer. So what have you guys been doing since that time, knowing this was going to happen? What have you been doing since the summer of 2020 until now to get ready for right now? Yeah, you know, I, I wish I had a list. It'd be three or four pages long, David. Um, you know, it, it's all of the infrastructure things, a lot of times that are behind the scenes that people don't necessarily, the general public don't necessarily know have to happen in order to run a Division I athletics program. And that might um, include, it does include, uh, from a compliance standpoint, just writing compliance policy and really certifying all of our coaches from a Division One compliance standpoint. That takes a lot of time. The regulatory environment at Division One is very different than that uh, at Division Three. Um, we had gone out and sought a partnership with Learfield um, so that we could really leverage and monetize our assets. And so our multimedia rights partner, um, Learfield, is, is coming in to help us sell corporate sponsorships and uh, distribute some of our content um, we had to sign a, a ticketing partner. We didn't necessarily have a ticketing platform. So we're working with Packy Olin um, on some of those things, a licensing partner with CLC. Um, so those are a lot of things behind the scenes. We had our first ever national signing day. And so really preparing the uh, national letters of intent and what that means with coaches and student athletes and how we kind of think about NLI uh, at St. Thomas. Um, and then, you know, we, we've, we've had to start to build the infrastructure from a staffing standpoint. None of our assistant coaches at the Division three level, uh, but for football, were full-time coaches. And so we've had to transition a lot of our part-time coaches to full-time or go out and hire full-time coaches, which we've done. Uh, and then a lot of the support uh, staff, whether it's revenue generating support staff or student athlete facing support staff and compliance, business operations, marketing, communications, athletic medicine, strength conditioning, um, academic support services. Those are all areas that we had, we, we've had to identify full-time staff in and build out a model uh, to help us support uh, this crazy business at the division one level. So those are just some examples 
um, of some things that we've done. You know, last night, uh, yeah, we celebrated a little bit with some donors uh, as we launched into Division One. And I stood up, I, I talked to our staff all the time about the fact that it feels like we're climbing a mountain. Um, and joke a little bit, we're climbing to the summit, right? And so we're, we're trying to get to the peak uh, of the mountain. And, and as you're doing that, if, if you've ever kind of done the climb, you're focused on the peak and you keep focusing on the peak. And sometimes it doesn't feel like you're getting any closer. You're, you're, you're doing all this work and you're hiking and you're making, pro you feel like you're making progress, but doesn't look any closer. But if you, if you do stop and turn around and just enjoy and acknowledge how far you've come, um, we did that last night. Last thing. Obviously, you're in a transitional period still in terms of being eligible for postseason tournaments. But as far as getting everything gathered for you personally and for the school, what are the expectations year one in D1? Yeah, you know, obviously, you don't want to communicate to anybody that it's OK not to be competitive. We, ex we expect our sports to be as competitive as they can be. But the one thing that I've actually communicated with our coaches is that I believe we have a little bit of a gift of time in that during this provisional period, we have the opportunity to build the foundation and the culture the way that we want to without the pressure of having to try to win the conference. Of course, I'd like to compete for conference championships, and I think we will eventually, um, but it's, we all know it's going to be a little bit of a journey, David. And, um, and so let's take this time to make sure that we don't cut corners, to make sure that we don't take any shortcuts, that we don't compromise anything in the long term for wins in the short term, and that we build the culture and the fabric and the foundation the way that we need to so that in years four and five, we can hit our stride and we have sustainable success. So, you know, really a lot of the things that we use to describe what we um, think success looks like in the first year is let's be proud of what we put on the field. Let's look at, let's, let's see progress. Let's kind of measure against culture. Uh, let's, let's establish some metrics that we think about from a recruiting standpoint, from a programmatic growth standpoint. And this first year, we should just be proud of how far how far we've come. Again, nobody wants to say that we don't want to be competitive. We understand it's going to be a little bit of a journey. Would love for us to compete where we can. Uh, but that's going to be more important that by years four and five, we hit that sustainable stride and we're more competitive moving forward from there.